Yesterday saw two murders in a seven-hour span, and last night in Belmopan, they got the wrong man. The commissioner tells us why. And as gang warfare in the city escalates, are the police and the Ministry of Home Affairs losing a hold on the gang mediation measures such as the LIU? Plus, is the public legal system broken? Prosecutors from the DPP's office sent out a red flag to the Attorney General. Also, we'll take you back to Silk Grass Farms for part two of our story on regenerative farming. Well, we've got details of these and other stories in our newscast for tonight, Wednesday, July 26, 2023. Good evening. With your news, I'm Indra Craig. This newscast is brought to you by Cellular World, your authorized Samsung distributor. Shop smart for your Samsung devices in Belize and enjoy benefits you won't get anywhere else. When you shop locally for your Samsung, all your devices will be covered by a one-year local warranty. You won't get that when shopping with the other guys. When in doubt, always look for the Cellular World seal to know you're getting the real deal. Shop with confidence and enjoy your Galaxy knowing that it can be repaired locally at our Samsung Service Center by certified Samsung technicians using original parts and machinery. Even better, enjoy the best LTE experience in Belize knowing that your Samsung devices are compatible with major local carrier networks. Get the ultimate Samsung Galaxy experience only when you shop from authorized Samsung resellers nationwide. Babe, I'm going out to pay the water bill. You don't need to go out. You could pay it from your phone. Look. Babe, the credit card bill. I'll go pay it. You can also pay it with your phone. I need to go deposit the baby service pay. You really want to go out, don't you? It's okay. I will make the transfer and you go play ball. With Atlantic Bank Mobile, your personal banking experience is easier and more convenient. Bank your way with any of our digital channels and save time for what matters most. Atlantic Bank. Building the future together. Belize, are you ready? The event you don't want to miss is almost here. Join us at the Belize International Music and Food Festival 2.0 on July 29th and 30th at the Marion Jones Sporting Complex. The Belize Tourism Board, Mars Production, Bellican, and the Belize City Council present a mega event to showcase the very best and biggest musical and culinary experience to hit the city. Yeah, this two-day event kicks off on Saturday, July 29th as we showcase 35 acts starring some of Belize's biggest performer like Stig the artist I'm gonna love you forever Britney Stars and T.Y. Music who will all take the stage alongside Morgan Heritage Spice Rotini 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 Biggest dance hall artist for 2023, Byron Messiah. And of course, you don't want to miss our 40 culinary vendors who will be bringing to you the taste of our jewel we call Belize. The day's activities kick off at 11 a.m. through to 3 p.m. with live performances by Belizean artists, food, and much more. Free to all visitors. The night show will have a packed agenda of performances by Belizean and international artists. Kicking off at 6 p.m. sharp. Come savor the rhythm at the Belize International Music and Food Festival 2.0. Security to the max. For more information, check us out on Facebook. Sponsors are Belize Tourism Board, Bellican, Belize City Council, Niche, National Sports Council of Belize. Pack, Angeles Press Limited, ICB, White Smith Wine, eCash, Smart, Channel 5, DigiWallet, Channel 7, National Bank of Belize, Medisco, Love FM, Dolphin Productions, Belize Electricity Limited, Creme Radio, Vibes Media, Fiesta.
Blast the radio and hits radio. Them belly full, but we hungry. A hungry mob is a hungry mob. Be honestly, frankly, I thought that after the government change that things would have looked better for us, but honestly got worse. There were a lot of stuff that we wanted to do, we couldn't do. Um, we lost a lot of business because of um, not being able to import. I used to do my own importation. When I took over, I started that part of it. But since this new change of administration, I smiling me have been blanked out, so that part of it is not there anymore. Cost of living gets so high, rich and poor they start. Smart introduces real unlimited postpaid plans, providing customers with unlimited talk, unlimited text, and unlimited data. Now that's a real great deal. With Smart Plus, Share 1 and 2, and Enterprise 1 and 2 plans, you can talk as much as you want, text as much as you want, and for the first time ever in Belize, you can enjoy unlimited data with your postpaid plan. So come in and sign up for an unlimited postpaid plan and enjoy limitless possibilities. In addition, other plans such as the Flex Junior, Choice, and Select have been boosted with a lot more talk, text and data providing you with the best value for your budget be unlimited with smart it's time to power your dollar with smart the office of the prime minister invites you to join us at the second annual belize investment summit from august 30th to september 1st 2023 at the grand carib resort on hamburgers key Belize, the land of endless potential, with a vibrant people and economy and a wealth of natural resources, is the region's premier investment hub, offering a range of opportunities across sectors including the blue, green and orange economies. The Belize Investment Summit 2023 is your chance to explore these opportunities and connect with potential partners, investors, financiers and stakeholders from across the globe. This three-day summit will offer networking opportunities, site visits, one-on-one -on -one meetings, roundtable discussions, business pitches, an expo, and keynote presentations from government officials and industry leaders. Gain insight into Belize's investment climate and the incentives that make our country the destination for investment. Register now for the Belize Investment Summit 2023 and discover a world of opportunities. Be a believer. Invest in Belize. Thrive in Belize. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. Right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. We've been reporting on a string of murders in the Belize District for the past two weeks, but tonight the headline is about a murder in Belmopan, which had not seen a murder for two months. The victim of this latest shooting is 33-year-old contractor Brodam Santos, who was shot and killed while socializing in his yard last night. Joe Marie Lanza followed this story today. Shortly after 8 o'clock last night in Belmopan, 30-year-old Brodam Santos was gunned down on Lime Street while socializing with two other people in his yard. The group was ambushed by two men who rode by on a motorcycle, firing shots, fatally wounding Santos and causing damages to two vehicles in the yard where multiple bullet holes were apparent. Last night sometime after 8 p.m., Police received a call of shots fired on Lime Street, and uh, based on that, they responded. Upon arrival, the lifeless body of a male person was found with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. 
The person was transported to the Benapan Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Investigations so far, so far revealed that the male individual, the victim, was socializing along with two other persons on the back of his vehicle um, in front of his home when two gunmen came on a motorcycle and uh, one of them fired shots at him with a shotgun, causing the fatal injuries. Police are still in that area canvassing to see what information can be obtained um, with a view to ascertain a motive in respect to this homicide. I can say that the victim is not someone who is known to police. Um, he is um, a law-abiding citizen, but one of the male persons he was socializing with is well known to police and is known within the Belmapan and Rowing Creek area as one of those troublemakers. And so we believe that that other person may have been the intended target and not the person who was actually killed. Has that individual been brought in to, for questioning to find out if he would have known who these attackers are, anything relating to this matter? Yes, he has been interviewed by the police and uh, no useful information is, has been obtained from him. And we, we, do, we do expect that um, he would not provide anything useful to the police investigation. Nonetheless, we are going to see what can be done to obtain um, information to be able to further the investigation. We learned today that the intended target is the older brother of a family member who is apparently under serious and sustained threat. He is 21-year-old Jalen Banner, who was caught with a prohibited firearm in Roaring Creek on Saturday. So we asked the Commissioner Williams about it. And are you able to speak about someone with that same last name as the, the target who was caught in Belmapan two days ago with a firearm, a 40 caliber, I believe? Um, can you speak about that? Were they related to this? Yes, on Saturday, I think um, police did intercepted, I think, the brother of the same individual with a prohibited firearm, a 40 caliber pistol. And he was arrested and charged for keeping a prohibited firearm and ammunition. In interviews conducted with him, he had stated to the police that he had the firearm because he knew that he um, is being sought by others to be killed. And that's the reason why he had it. So um, perhaps, yes, um, there could be some link to um, that person who was caught with the firearm and the incident last night. So was Santos unwittingly the victim of a crime targeting his friend? His family declined comment today, but the compul says that the victim had to be familiar with the kind of company he kept and the consequences it could have brought about. Should Mr. Should his friend who was the victim, should he have been warned that, or should he have known that Man, you, your friend, they run very hot right now. Well, from what we gathered is that they have been childhood friends. Um, they went to school together, everything together, so they knew each other quite well, and they would normally hang out, as they did last night. It just so happened that last night was the unfortunate night where he was eventually killed. Joe Marie Lanza, 7 News. Police are still searching for suspects in this murder. Jalen Banner was formally arrested and charged on Tuesday morning for keeping a prohibited firearm and ammunition. And back to the city. 29-year-old Stephen Moss is the city's most recent murder victim. He was killed in a drive-by shooting while riding his bike on Caesar Ridge Road at around 2 yesterday afternoon. Shortly after Moss was gunned down, Police found an abandoned Range Rover with the engine still running on Amara Avenue. The Compal told us more today about the vehicle that was used to orchestrate Moss's murder. Yesterday afternoon, sometime after 2 p.m. thereabout, um, police received information of shots fired on Caesar Ridge Road. Um, that's off Queen Charlotte. And uh, based on that, they responded where the lifeless body of um, Steve Moss was found with what appeared to be gunshot injuries. He was transported to the hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Police investigations so far revealed that Moss was riding a bicycle on Caesar Ridge um, in the area of Bismarck Club when he was approached by a group of men in a Land Rover, Range Rover. Um, two persons alighted that vehicle 
and uh, opened sh fire at um, Mass, causing his fatal injury. Police response quickly led to the, the um, location of the vehicle um, here on Amara Avenue, but the suspects had fleed the vehicle at that particular moment. We have conducted a number of interviews um, within the area and have gathered some very useful information. And at this time, we do have one suspect in custody and are seeking two other persons um, in respect to that particular murder. Sir? The Range Rover was from a rental. Um, it was rented the day before. Um, we also have the person in custody who rented that vehicle, and he is also a part of our investigation. Is this believed to have been a gang-related hit? Yes, it is. The individual who rented the vehicle is currently in police custody while investigators are still in search of two more suspects. Police are still awaiting confirmation from the forensics department to positively identify the decomposing body that was found in a BMW in Sandhill on Friday. The commissioner of police says that investigators have almost confirmed that the deceased is in fact PIV member Fojan Lewis. At this time, no. Um, we still do have strong feelings that it is him, um, based on the vehicle and how he was dressed. Um, I, I think the post-mortem has been conducted. I've not gotten the result of that as yet to see if they were able to identify the tattoos um, on his body, which have confirmed that it is him. But again, we are looking at that matter. Um, we is do that have an internal PIV matter, sir. We do believe that it is internal. Um, we do have. Um, we had some people detained but we could not have obtained uh, enough information to lay charges against them, and so they had to be released. Um, but it's an investigation the police continue to pursue. But what could have led someone to lure the 23-year-old into a secluded area? Compal shared some speculations. Was it over a firearm? Reportedly, uh, a firearm. Uh, I'm told it's an M4 carbine, which should have been a part of one gang's assets but ended up in another gang. Is that the intelligence? Will a man get good intelligence, Jules? Um, maybe I have to make you be the director of um, National Security Council. You have all the intelligence, right? Um, but we do get information that it has to do with some firearm. Yes. At present, police do not have anyone in custody while they continue to investigate. So since July 17, there have been four gang-related murders in the Belize district, and there is the constant threat of retaliation. So what are the police doing about it? And does this escalation indicate that the vaunted leadership intervention unit and its mitigation measures are failing? And with police now charging gang leaders for gang membership, are the cops desperate to get them off the street as a means of de-escalating the violence. We asked the commissioner today. Yes, we have been going after a few of those um, prominent figures who we believe are involved or may have had something to do with the recent spate of killings um, in the city. Again, we have to strike a balance in ensuring that we deal extremely tough with those persons who are adamant to create havoc um, in the city. And at the same time, we still need to continue to work with those persons who are working with us in holding the peace. And so, while I know that there may be some critics in terms of um, the work of LIU and uh, would like to make it seem that LIU is failing, that is not the case. And uh, as I had discussed many times before, that we don't expect that LIU is going to stop all crime from occurring. Certainly crime will occur from time to time and we will have to find a way to, to address it. You would know as members of the media that when we do have these gang killings, um, it is extremely difficult to contain the, the, um, the retaliations. And I think that when you compare our actions now compared to the past, you would see that the retaliations are much slower. And so whenever we have these incidents, we certainly will respond in whatever way we can, lawfully, and do what needs to be done to address the issue. One lawful way by which we would normally do is to look at those persons who are involved in gang activities, are actively involved, and then we go after them under the gang legislation. It is either we apply the gang law or we do an SOE. I am sure that the, the latter 
um, would be preferable to some, but at the same time, too, I also think that the farmer um, is more is more legally done um, in terms of just going after specific persons as opposed to declaring an entire area, um, um, declaring an, an entire area, and then we go in there and operate. That gives some law-abiding citizens some discomfort that they don't like. So we just try to use the gang law. We just pick out who needs to be picked out, and then we charge them. And that's how police ended up charging Alex Underwood, a reputed gang figure from the Yara area. His family says he is reformed and a working man and a football team franchise leader. But the police seems to think otherwise. We asked the commissioner about it. How do you respond to the family of Alex Underwood who have come forward to say that, look, the man has been arrested twice for the same offense and that he's a changed man and he's actually a functional member of society with CYDP and Cisco's construction. You know, if I were to go and question every gang member on the streets of Belize City and ask them what their current gang affiliation is, you know what the answer is going to be? I have changed. And you wonder how they have changed, but they still continue to commit crime. So I, I don't buy that as much as, yes, I would like to believe what Mr. Underwood is saying. His behavior has proven contrary. Yes, there, there are some people who are out there and uh, they give a front. And behind that front, they're committing crime. And that, we cannot allow that to happen, no. So, so you believe that Mr. Underwood has specific knowledge of some of the recent crimes that have been happening? I'm not going to answer that question, no. Underwood was remanded yesterday on charges of being a gang member. His attorney, Dickie Bradley, intends to apply for Supreme Court bail on Friday. We'll take a break now. Coming up, Commissioner Chester comment on the Boots Martinez brawl. Plus, later on, rockers in Belize will talk to Morgan Heritage. Don't go away. With so many different styles of light bulbs, sometimes it's tricky to choose the right one. Whether it's a screw-in, candelabra base, or pins, we have what you need. From lamps to ceiling fans, floodlights or chandeliers, we have bulbs available in cool white, warm white, or daylight. All you have to do is choose. Once you have chosen your bulb, the final choice is technology. LED technology is energy efficient, long-lasting, produces a high-quality light, and saves you money. Choose wisely and let Benny's be your one-stop for lights. Benny's. Quality and saving. How does investment services work? For example, Joe's Construction wants to expand its operations by purchasing new equipment and hiring additional staff. How can Joe's Construction get an investment loan? The answer, Investment Services appraises the loan application and focuses on two key areas, adequate collateral and repayability. Investment Services will also consider how Belizeans and the economy will benefit from this new investment through job creation and business growth. The terms and conditions for Joe's Construction loan will be based on the purpose and cash flow. After recommendation and approval, the loan is disbursed. SSB remains committed to proper management of the fund through prudent and responsible investments for the benefit of its beneficiaries, employers, and the Belizean economy. Social Security Board, an investment for you, your family, your future. Babe, I'm going out to pay the water bill. You don't need to go out. You could pay it from your phone. Look. Babe, the credit card bill. I'll go pay it. You can also pay it with your phone.
Babe? Yes, love? I need to go to Positive Baby Series, babe. You really want to go out, don't you? It's okay. I will make the transfer and you go play ball. With Atlantic Bank Mobile, your personal banking experience is easier and more convenient. Bank your way with any of our digital channels and save time for what matters most. Atlantic Bank, building the future together. Oh, you thought we were finished? The Belize International Music and Food Festival 2.0 continues on Sunday, July 30th as we give you the culture, vibe, and plain out bacchanal as we swing outside the fence with this mega two-day experience. On night two, the Belize Tourism Board, Mars Production, Bellican, and Belize City Council steps up to showcase our mega band like the Garifuna Collective. The Punta Rebel Frontliner. The TLC Band. TL Shine. He'll be. Sweet Pain 3.0. And celebrating 50 years of musical journey. The Gil Harry 7 Band. Joining them on stage, we have international performers like Lyrical. Soca artist Skinny Fabulous. Topping off the night, we have the icon, the musical legend, Mr. Busy Signal. Belize, it's about to be a weekend we will never forget. So get your tickets today. Security to the mess. For more information, check us out on Facebook. So mark your day, get your ticket, bring your appetite, and come jump up with us at the Belize International Music and Food Festival 2.0. Monday is a holiday. <laughs> One phone call it take to make some more life. Sponsors are Belize Tourism Board, Bellican, Belize City Council, Niche, National Sports Council of Belize, Pat, Angeles Press Limited, ICB, White Smith Wine, eCash, Smart, Channel 5, DigiWallet, Channel 7, National Bank of Belize, Medisco, Love FM, Dolphin Production, Belize Electricity Limited, Creme Radio, Vibes Media, Fiesta Radio, and Hits Radio. Everything is better electric. Be more efficient with electric vehicles and transforming your home with Energy Star electric appliances and power tools. This helps to create a greener and cleaner world for the next generation. Energize your world with BL. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. Right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. We've been reporting on the changes in the judiciary, which has translated into many new judges, all foreign and all highly paid. And then, when word got out that... Even entry-level posts for a judicial research assistant are being paid more than Belizean judicial officers with many years in the system. Well, that's when a hardened resentment really started to set in. And that is part of the reason why, less than a month after the new Attorney General was installed, he received a frustrated letter from the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions on behalf of the Crown Councils. Signed by all 11 of them, these prosecutors say that they are not getting paid enough for what their duties entail. According to them, every day their lives are being put at risk because of prosecuting criminals, some of whom have been known to target witnesses before. They point out that there is non-life insurance or security scheme for them. That's why they feel it's unfair 
that an attorney with less than two years' experience at the bar has been offered a contractual employment as judicial legal assistant by the government, a position that is accompanied by a 70000 per annum salary, along with benefits and 20% gratuity at the conclusion of the two-year term. This represents a remuneration package of $218,400. This has, quote, accelerated and intensified the long-standing frustrations of the prosecutors at the ODPP, end quote. They then explain that there are two prosecutors who have similar years as the incoming judicial legal assistant, April Cam Campbell. These two prosecutors and others working up to five years are only making a little over $53,000 per annum. They emphasize that even senior Crown counsels that have been working nine, 13, and even 36 years do not make $70,000 per annum. They say they feel insulted, marginalized, devalued, overlooked, and disrespected. The letter, which was dated July 11th, aged for an increase in their salaries and benefits before July 21st, five days later. There is no word that that has happened. We will continue to follow this story. Last night, we brought you the video of former Minister Boots Martinez post Lisa Brawl, a confrontation that could have turned deadly if the former minister hadn't dodged a crowbar that was almost brought down on his head. As we told you, the confrontation happened in the immediate aftermath of Belize's latest hurricane, but it's only now made the rounds on social media. Today, the press asked the Compol if he's seen it, and here's his response. How could I not see it when all the media houses posted it? It's all over social media. So even if I didn't want to see it, I am forced to see it. Um, and again, I saw that the, the media um, had a lengthy interview with, with Boots yesterday. Um, we have not received an official complaint as far as I know. Um, I don't know if one has been made, but to my knowledge, no. But if one is made, then the police will have to investigate and look at it and see what needs to be done. But the behavior of a former police officer... He's a former police. He's not a police. I don't control his behavior. Huh? <laughs> When 20-year-old Derek O was left to die of heat stroke inside a metal-encased police van, four officers were charged for causing his death. Among them were Isaias Sanchez and Rosario Romero, the two men who last month saw those charges dropped on the orders of the DPP. Now, one or both of those men could end up suing the police department. We asked the Compol about it today. Again, when we, we look at um, the issue of malicious prosecution, the fact that a matter was withdrawn against you does not make it malicious prosecution. The law is clear that the prosecution must have been done with malice and would have had to cause you um, loss, meaning cause damage to your fame or reputation. I, I don't think that what transpired um, would amount to that. Certainly there was reasonable cause um, for the police to have arrested those persons who were arrested. Again, it was done based on instructions obtained from the DPP's counsel. Um, they are the ones who normally advise the police. And again, if it is that when the investigation is completed um, in its entirety and uh, it goes to the DPP office now for a full review before going to PI, if the DPP were to find that um, the evidence was not strong enough against the individuals, then the DPP can withdraw, which, is, which was what was done in this particular instance. When the DPP reviewed the file and um, saw that, not to say that there was no evidence, but there was not sufficient evidence um, that she believed would have resulted in a conviction, she withdrew. Now, had she found that there was not sufficient evidence that could have led to a conviction and proceeded with the prosecution, then you would have been able to say that there is some degree of malice there. But the DPP office did what they believe ought to have done in accordance with the law. And they were, they were, the matter was withdrawn against them. So anybody can sue, you know. Um, the question is how far it is going to go. And so we just wait and see. The case against the other two officers allegedly responsible for Derek O's death, Borland and Peralta, stands. 
A prelim preliminary inquiry against them began on July 14th and will keep following this story. A wanted man accused of shooting a tour guide in Hattieville just may be hiding in plain sight. On Monday, we reported that 25-year-old Tyler Lewis was shot twice to his back and abdomen upon emerging from his home after hearing someone call out for him. Police issued a wanted poster for the accused, Akeem Augustus, but have not been able to locate him. However, we were told today that Augustus is still roaming the village as a free man. We asked the compo about it. I know that um, we do have the, the shooting in um, Hattieville area where a person was shot um, whilst at home. He was called out by someone. He came to the door and he was shot. The police, I know, are looking for the suspect in respect to that, um, that matter. Yes, that's him, Akeem August Augustus. Um, I don't know if he's still walking around Hattieville, but I'll have to check with O.C. Hattieville to see if that is the case. And if that is the case, then we need to ensure we get him into custody and uh, let the law take its course. Tyler Lewis is still recovering from the incident. We turn now to a much more complicated police scenario in the Curzo district. We're referring to last week Thursday night's wild shootout in the country's northernmost village of Chan Chen. At least 22 shots from high-powered assault rifles penetrated the homes of Hall brothers, which are in the same yard in that village. Despite the spray from high-powered weaponry, miraculously, no one was killed, but Sergio Hall was shot to the shoulder. It's one more round of retaliation in northern narco wars that have been playing out from Libertad to Chan Chen since early June. We asked the commissioner about their inability to secure the homes of known targets. We do have our presence still in that area with our operation teams doing what needs to be done to prevent these things from occurring. But again, like I said, there is no police work that is going to be foolproof um, to avoid these things from occurring. But I think that all in all, the police work in the area has been extremely good um, to the extent that we have seen the speed of shooting decreases uh, decrease tremendously. So how can you say this when a house was riddled with 22 shots from an AR-15 and an M4 carbine, sir? You know the type of rungs used. They are consistent with the one used at Usher House. The man lives in Chan Chen. Hall is a known target. How is it that this happens, that so much lead enter the man's house and you all aren't anywhere near to prevent it? I can say, Jules, based on what you, re you would refer to as empirical data, um, you're a person who loves data when it's convenient to you. Um, when it is not convenient to you, then you try to throw it through the window. Um, but if you listen carefully to what I said, the speed, I didn't say that the efforts of the police in the area have stopped it. But certainly we would have seen earlier on that the shootings were more consistent. Um, no, it is not. That is not the case. And again, we are not, we are not providing individual security for these people. We provide general security for the public. But we know that and, the halls uh, in Chan Chen are known targets, yes, sir. That does not mean that the police must go and mine the hall's house. Then, if but that is the case, so many if that is the case, sir, no, Jules. You, all are, you have three checkpoints around Victoria Street. Mr. Vasquez. But between the Curtis Usher house, uh -huh. then the Breda house, then the Hall house, we see a clear pattern that assault rifles are being used with high-powered ammunition. And we know the rival is there. I'm saying that you're saying that, well, you know, they happen night after night. But what you cite as incremental improvement is still a district living in terror in the grips of narcos. The, gov the state has had to approve an additional supplementary allocation. And you all are still unable to at least stop the letting up of a known target's house. Just have a checkpoint at Chan Chen. How hard can it be? Jules. His house and his brother one, so never just one See, house. Yeah. Again, again, Mr. Vasquez, do you know what is a speed? Sir, it's, no, do you know what is a speed? Sir, it's a, a, a difference without distinction. That's what I'm saying. That you're citing a difference between night after night, but I'm saying there's no distinction for the average citizen Jules. who feels terrorized. If something happens, Every day. And then 
after a while, it begins to happen once a week. Isn't that a reduction? Isn't that an indication that the consistency with which it was occurring has changed? I don't expect that the police will be able to stop all crime. But certainly the efforts of the police in the area have minimized the occurrences of these incidents. And I think that the society, the public in the Corozal district are very much appreciative of that. No arrests have been made for the Hall shooting. And while police are investigating these recent shootings and murders, they're going a step further after they realize that the vehicle driven by the gunman in the mosque shooting was rented. Today, the Compo said that they will be proposing a law against tinting rental vehicles. Here's what he explained. What we might need to do is to pass a law that when it comes to rental vehicle rental companies, they cannot rent or they cannot tint their vehicles that they're going to rent. At least if the, the, the two front glass must not be tinted nor the windshield. Because we find now that many of the rental companies have heavily tinted vehicles. And when the criminal elements want to go and rent vehicles, they rent those that are heavily tinted. Again, with, a, with, with the intent to conceal their identity when in those vehicles to go and do nonsense. So it is something that we will have to look at to see if we can get cabinet's approval to disallow rental companies from, renting, from tinting vehicles that they are renting. As you heard earlier, the police can't guard every crime-affiliated home that's under threat. And indeed, policing in Belize City is becoming more and more complex. And that's because the state is cooperating with gangsters in employment projects and finding alternative livelihoods. But when those gangsters flip the script and engage in criminal activity, then it puts police in a quandary to the mediate, do they mediate or prosecute? We asked the Kumpel about that tension today. So I'm saying that how difficult is it for the police to tread a clear path when these are people that are cooperating with the state, but you all may have suspicion that they are involved in a capital offense. Again, Jules, um, the persons that we had detained for the Fajan Lewis murder, while, yes, they are members of, LI, of PIV, and let me make it clear, while, for the most part, PIV and BLC are active members of LIU, not everyone within those two groups are involved with LIU. Meaning and involved, being paid by LIU. Being employed by LIU. Um, so those two individuals that we had detained for Foshan murder are not employed by LIU. Yes, they are members of PIV, but they are not employed by LIU. Likewise with Alex Underwood, he is not employed by LIU. We classify membership of LIU as persons who are employed by LIU within their respective eras, as you would know, the programs that we are running. And we take a break from all the crime talk. When we come back, real reggae royalty arrived in Belize today. We'll talk to Morgan Heritage. Don't go away. Babe, I'm going out to pay the water bill. You don't need to go out. You could pay it from your phone. Look. Babe, the credit card bill. I'll go pay it. You can also pay it with your phone. I need to go deposit the baby service pay. You really want to go out, don't you? It's okay. I will make the transfer and you go play ball. With Atlantic Bank Mobile, your personal banking experience is easier and more convenient. 
bank your way with any of our digital channels and save time for what matters most. Atlantic Bank, building the future together. Wake up to positivity and inspiration. It's a fresh and diverse twist on your mornings. Tune in to Sun Up on 7 every weekday morning at 6.30 a.m. right here on your nation station, Channel 7. It's the morning show you don't want to miss. When hungry or craving, when laughter or tears, enjoy the best snack in your flavors or gear. Asadas, bocadas, chiladas, doradas, delicious fresh snack is done right and done here. Done right, done here. This newscast is brought to you by Cellular World, your authorized Samsung distributor. Please, you're watching The Nation Station, Channel 7. International Music and Food Festival starts on Saturday in Belize City and after months of promotion the buzz started in earnest today when Saturday night headliners the reggae band Morgan Heritage arrived in country today Jules Vasquez spoke to them at the airport Tell me how come in Jamaica so many people still have Rasta. Tell me how come them never charge me name on but them charge Explain to me, guys, you all are back in Belize. How does it feel? It's a wonderful feeling. It's been too long. It's your third time. First time here for a festival. So you know a lot of people are on the bill. Yes. 
Now we know that heritage has a representation that is global. What do you all want Belizeans to remember you all for on this bill? That we've been doing this for a long time. And we just want to share the love and the joy that we've been missing from each other for so many years. And finally, Morgan Heritage is back in the Belize, and we're excited about it. We have a new album that's out called The Homeland. So this summer tour for us going to all these different Caribbean islands is sort of a homecoming, places we haven't been in six, seven, in the case of Belize, I think it's been over 10 years. So we're really looking forward, like my brother Peter said, to share that energy and that vibration, that love that we feel when we're doing what we do on that stage this Saturday. What are some of the favorites that are uh, uh, tracks that Belizeans can look forward to this weekend? Well, I'm happy that we're here early. We are very, very um, interested to see when we get to the media houses what music Belizeans have been enjoying, you know, on high rotation over the last 10 years, because it's been a minute. So we'll figure it out as we go along. No, is that a, a challenge you all have? Because you all remain one of the most productive reggae, roots reggae bands in the world. But your catalog is so large yes. and your classics are so sizable yes. that no matter which show you have, you have to play certain songs, yes. right? You don't have you have to play yes. Down by the River, you don't have it read, in at anything there. Those how, how do you all okay. yeah. how, how do you all mix those classics? With the new stuff that, uh, that on a really feel. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't leave the classics, you know, because, you know, when people come to see you live, they want to hear their favorite songs. So, you know, of course, we're going to introduce some of the new songs from the new album, The Homeland, and a few um, other songs from albums that has been released over the years. But definitely we'll be doing the classics, and those classics that you mentioned will definitely be a part of the show. A man is still a man. One of the greatest things about heritage is always the song, how good your band songs. Um, you know, on another play track, right? That's a huge differentiation in the current reggae scene. The music is live and it should sound live. Explain to me what type of lineup you all are traveling with. Uh, we have the band has grown a lot since you guys have seen us, and we've added a lot of different elements that behind this new album that we're going to be touring behind on the Homeland World Tour. Um, but I think one of the biggest highlights for us is the homecoming of our nephew, Jamiri Morgan, who's half Belizean, right? So Johnny Mars and, 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 and the crew, Morgan's that's Gramps Morgan's son, yeah? So John Mars and, and the crew was, was kind enough to extend an invitation to him and give him a chance to perform in front of his people, you know, our people, yeah. is his homeland. So that is one of the configurations that we're bringing different that we didn't have 10 years ago. And while Morgan Heritage headlines day one's bill, the artist with the most international buzz currently is Byron Messiah. He's scheduled to arrive tonight and will perform tomorrow morning on Sun Up. So don't miss that. Last week, BEL held a press conference where they explained that their servers were hacked and customer and employee information was leaked into the dark web. Since they found out about the leak, they've been combing through it. And so far, the types of information they've been finding have mostly been social security numbers, vacation request forms, invoices, and other similar data. When asked if any credit card numbers were leaked, the CEO, John Mencia, said that they don't store that information. However, today the company made a slight correction to that statement. While they say that there is no evidence that customer credit or debit card information was leaked, they clarified that those numbers and expiration dates were being stored in the company's database. However, they printed out that the information was not being kept on the file servers, which were the ones hacked, but rather on a separate server that, to their knowledge, was untouched by the ransomware. But to be cautious, BL has removed all credit and debit card information from their databases. They also explained to us that they have contacted the customers whose information had been stored and informed them of the clarification. 
Yesterday, we took you to Silkgrass Farms, where we gave you a snapshot of their regenerative farming and unique products. Today, we'll take you a little deeper into their bushes to show you how exactly their products gets from the soil to shelf. Courtney Menzies has part two of the media strip to Silkgrass. 90% of Silkgrass Farms is teeming with wildlife, be it bushes that were never cleared, or even jaguars and other animals wandering around. And according to the directors and founders of SGF, that portion of their farms will remain untouched. Instead, their profits will be made from the other 10% that had already been cleared before they got there. But while the larger animals and tall trees are left to flourish in their backyard, even the smaller worms and pollinators, as well as the normally unsightly grass, are left to thrive on the actual farm. They call it regenerative farming, a much different take on agriculture than everyday farmers. I think one of the things, one of the very first things that we agreed upon uh, outside of not cleaning on any more forests, but just reclaiming the land that was already existing, um, was the, the, uh, the fact that uh, we would never go back to commodities. I think that was my big thing at Mandy. I just come out of a monoculture called citrus. And I said, I would never want to go back into one, a monoculture, and two, a commodity, which is citrus again. And so we agreed that they also wouldn't want that. that they would want uh, to put in place uh, what fits. And that's exactly what we're still trying to do. Wet areas that we can't drain, we're gonna put bamboo, and so there's a lot of different concepts that we're going to use in order for us to uh, add value back or regenerate the soils as we see it. Because we really do believe that a healthy soil will give us a healthy crop and will give us the profits that we will require not to take out, but to put back in to uh, the people, the business, uh, and everything else that we've created. And the crops they've been able to harvest so far include pineapples, oranges, and watermelons. And they've turned them into pure juices, straight from the farm to their state-of-the-art factory, and then to the fridge. But their main production is coconut oil and water. The brown coconuts are harvested, dehusked, and deshelled, while the green ones are drained of their water. And what gives their products a higher quality, especially their oil, is that it's cold pressed, meaning it doesn't use extra heat and chemicals, so it retains more nutrients. But while you'll soon see SGF coconut milk added to their line of products, you'll also have to look out for their cassava flour, juice blends, and more. According to Dr. Canton, the sky is the limit in terms of what they can plant and create. We have a lot of hopeful, like passion fruit. We have a lot of hopeful, like sour sap and blends of sour saps, uh, even in our coconut milk uh, and creams and stuff like that. Tropical blends like, uh, you know, Coco Lopez for uh, bar drinks, pina colada and stuff like that we can do. Uh, a completely different type of uh, cream, coconut cream, used for drinks with less, a lot less sugar. Pitaya, which is dragon fruit that you saw there, uh, Faye mentioned on color, but it's not just color. Uh, there's some people that, uh, like when you make slurries or you make uh, smoothies uh, and stuff like that, you want something that adds body to whatever it is you're going to drink. And uh, if you have eaten dragon fruit, you know that outside of the little seediness that, that comes with it, it has a very great uh, constituency, consistency sorry, that um, will lend to some of the things that we want to do. So we're, uh, we're open to almost anything in regards to when it comes to juices. For us, I don't think there's any fixed um, plethora of goods, I think there's, we're open to, to just about anything. And I think, and, I, and, and to be honest with you, I think it's been one of our successes. Some people may say, may say, oh, you can't decide, but it's not about decision. Decision is very easy for us most of the time. And all their current and future products are produced with the thought of giving back. Their revenues allow them to preserve most of their farmland, but it also creates employment for scores of Southerners and immigrants, as well as opening a school on the compound for their children. 100% of the profits from this enterprise go to support the local community through our employment and education and some of the other things you've seen here, and also this amazing natural resource. Our model is all about of Belize, by Belize, and for Belize. It's a circular economic model that means don't take from the soil, put back into the soil. Use regenerative 
uh, renewable energy sources, um, put back where you can, and lay the groundwork for future generations. Courtney Menzies, 7 News. Tonight at the conclusion of our series on UNICEF and the government of Japan's efforts to bolster vaccination in Belize, we're looking at vaccine schedule adherence. It's a term that most people only learn as young parents taking their babies to clinics for multiple shots. Still, it's something that the Japan Project for Bolstering Vaccination in Belize has been keen to support. Tonight, we're looking at the importance of vaccine schedule adherence and hearing from two medical professionals who work daily to keep vaccine rates up. Cherie Salsal reports. This news feature is a collaboration between 7 News, UNICEF, the people of Japan, and the Ministry of Health. Vaccines, they've had a bad rap since the pandemic when lockdowns and widespread misinformation left even measles, rubella and polio vaccine schedules at risk of failure. A very challenging um, situation for us here in Orange Rock in specific um, communities because of cultural beliefs some false information that has been spreading around by other communities and um, also some feel that we are giving the COVID vaccine uh, to the children and they don't want that. Some doesn't want it because of the vaccine causes fever. So what we have done is doing a lot of health education to the community, providing health fairs, um, outreach, we do home visits. We try to even provide Tylenol to the, um, some families that cannot afford Tylenol to help them. With those simple things, we have seen that it helps a lot with certain communities. But some is just a little bit more challenging. But at the end of the day, we are here to reach a goal and to prevent um, communicable disease in this community. And it gives us a reassurance that knowing that our community is over 95 percentage um, protected. But what is a vaccine schedule and why is it important? It is very, very important to the family to stick with the immunization schedule because they all go in sequence and this vaccine is given at a specific time and to give the protection to the child at a specific age. Example for the pentavalent started at two months, four months and six months and it's very, very important to stick with the schedule that the nurse or the doctor are giving to the uh, family because the more they stick to the schedule, the more effective the vaccine will be. And along with the effectivity, adherence to vaccine schedules have been the most important goal of the UNICEF Japan project. It's why they've worked to equip rural clinics with the appropriate equipment and personnel. Just what we saw on the day August Pine Ridge got a vaccine refrigerator with a door that actually closed. I am very thankful that yes, you're thinking about us, they don't forget us, and it will be very helpful for the community too and for the nurse. It's very helpful because it gives you more, uh, the technology is more advanced now, that now we collect the doors for the um, box in the refrigerator because the previous one you can't lock it so it's not really secure our vaccines but with this one yes and the next point is that it makes alarm too when there it's a low temperature below two or when the temperature is higher than eight and what happens if you or your child misses a dose Nurse Reed says it's nothing that the clinics can't handle. Well, they just return back to the clinic and the nurse will just guide them and let them know that it's okay and let them know that we, you miss it, but we start um, from where you belong, that you belong on the schedule. We keep on moving forward from there. We don't discourage them and let them know that, oh, the vaccine won't work. It will work. It's just that, you know, depending on which vaccine, you will have to start but from scratch or you just continue with the regimen. It's work that in the long run contributes to herd immunity for multiple communicable diseases and the overall effectivity of vaccines. Well, it was a pleasure for me to be working at my own village because I'm originally from here. And it's, I think it's very helpful for the community to, to have a nurse here. Because before they may used to go with us San Felipe to get vaccines. It is very rewarding knowing that your community that you are living in, it is highly protected against communicable diseases and it also lessens our work in the future if any of those communicable diseases would ever come around. Um, just example, COVID, 
You know, we don't want to get to another situation like that, having measles outbreak here in Belize. So that's why it's very, very important that we emphasize on the vaccine. And I feel very happy that we are doing our part and we have families that is also doing their part. This news feature is a collaboration between Seven News, UNICEF, the people of Japan and the Ministry of Health. And that's our newscast for tonight. Thanks for watching. With your news, I'm Indra Craig. Remember, you can find a full transcript of the news at 7newsbelieve.com and see the streaming video on our Facebook or YouTube pages. Have a great night, stay safe, and join me back here tomorrow at 7.